President Biden made the first stop today in Baltimore on his national tour to promote his infrastructure plan. He's scheduled to sign the bill into law on Monday. The president said his plan would improve the transportation of products and, and supplies across the country, easing prices for consumers while adding unionized jobs. While Democrats celebrate the passage of, of the infrastructure bill, questions remain about whether Build Back Better will also pass. Earlier today, I had the opportunity to speak with Representative Jim Clyburn about that and the current status of the George Floyd Policing Act. Here's what he said. Democrats have something to celebrate. Uh, you have just passed the infrastructure bill that Biden put part as his part one of his kind of project for America. But Biden is in a bit of trouble. Uh, latest polls show his approval rating is now down to 38 percent. It is the lowest at this point in his pre uh, presidency of any modern president except Donald Trump. What do you think passing the infrastructure bill will do for Democrats and for Biden himself uh, in terms of the public perception of them? And what does this low approval rating pretend for the hard road ahead for the second piece of his agenda, which is the Build Back Better plan? Well, uh, thank you very much for having me. First of all, uh, Build Back Better is the third piece. This is the second piece. The first piece was the American Rescue Act. And we passed that bill. Uh, and that bill uh, rescued families. That bill uh, cut tax on people, uh, families with children uh, if they didn't do anything else. Getting over half of the children out of poverty is a big deal. Now, it may not be a big deal for people uh, who don't have uh, to worry about health care uh, and getting their children uh, their certain items for school, et cetera. But that was the first thing. This was the second thing. Now, the reason you said this is the first thing rather than the second thing is because we did not message the American Rescue Act uh, properly. And I, I fail to understand that because Joe Biden has often uh, said one of the reasons that things went wrong with the Affordable Care Act is they didn't go out and tell people what we had done. But we just did not tell people what we did with the American Rescue Act. I hope we don't make the same mistake with this bill. It's a big bill, and it's a good bill. $65 billion for, uh, for broadband by itself would make this bill worth doing. And to look at all the roads and the bridges and the water and the sewage and uh, the other uh, ports and rails, improvements that, that's going to occur, all over Columbia, South Carolina today, people are talking about the fact that when this bill passed, the governor announced himself, I now have the money to fix malfunction junction that's been a plague on the Columbia citizens for almost 30 years. So he is doing the message that we better message too. And I believe you see these numbers turn around if we do that. But if you sit back like we did with the Affordable Care Act, we lost 63 seats, Democrats did, over the Affordable Care Act because we didn't bother to tell people what we had done. And we came back eight years later mm -hmm and ran on the Affordable Care right. Act and won the majority back. That's what it's going to take. Uh, Congressman, progressives were willing to compromise on the infrastructure bill, willing to go ahead and take a vote on it without getting absolute assurances from the moderates that they would vote for the Build Back Better plan. Now Manchin is signaling with the, you know, the new news about the rise in inflation, that that is also a concern to him. They've already put it off because they say that they cannot take an, a vote on in good conscience without getting a new scoring from the CBO. The CBO is basically saying that they cannot pro tell us when they can provide it, and it could be weeks away. Where do you think things stand on the Build Back Better plan? Well, the Build Back Better plan has to pass the House first. First things first. And uh, Joe Manchin is not in the House. So the progressives uh, worked with the moderates uh, and the Congressional Black Caucus with the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, the Asian Pacific Islanders. We got eight distinct groups in our caucus that we have to work with, uh, the New Dems. All of these people work together to find common ground. We can only lose four votes in the House. 
And so what we had to do is each group had to get outside of his comfort zone. I met with the moderates and I pleaded with them, get outside of your comfort zone so we can pass them. One hour later, I met with the Congressional Black Caucus and pleaded with them, get outside of your comfort zone. I'm very comfortable with the way you are doing it your way. We need to find common ground. So, and we all did. So the progressive give up something, the moderates give up something, and that's what we're gonna do to pass the bill in the House. Now in the House, the bill gets to the Senate. Then I hope my Democrats in the Senate, I hope that the White House will get engaged. I hope that these numbers that I have already seen on Build Back Better that says, uh, some say that it will have $600 billion in deficit reduction. Another one says it might have a $1.2 trillion in deficit reduction. I don't know what it's going to be, but all of us are going to have to trust somebody. I'm, the, I'm not a CBO scorer, and not is anybody else in the House or the Senate. Right. So if these people tell you that that's what it's going to be, we've been relying on them ever since I've been in the Congress, so why won't we rely on them this right. time? So, uh, Congressman, I would like to ask you if you are happy with the Build Back Better plan and where the numbers landed. Many of the, the things that black people really, really cared about and were promised to them got cut back substantially, in addition to things that other people cared about, got cut back substantially in order to get the moderates on board. Are you happy with where that bill landed? We cut back. We did not cut out. And that's where I think we have to really focus attention. It's like I told my caucus when I met with them, I used to work for Southern Governor. And one time uh, we gave speeches at the same time in different places, and we were saying what looked, turned out to be the opposite. I went in to offer my resignation, and the governor said to me, look at that glass on the table. It's half full of water. Because of your experiences, it's half empty. Because of my experiences, it's half full. Go back to your office and let's see what we can do to fill the glass up. So that's what we were trying to do here. These scores are 10 year scores. And if it takes 10 years uh, for something to score, let's cut it back and do it for two years and see where we stand after two years. So we didn't cut things out, we cut them back. And so I think it would be, uh, that's why we ought not be using numbers. Because anytime you get a number, it's a 10 year number. And some of these things we may not need to do uh, beyond two years. So that to me is what the public has to understand. I'm gonna do everything I can to get the public to understand that's what we've done here. Now, Charles, you remember uh, two, three weeks ago, every time I turned on my TV, somebody was yelling, you just cut $30 billion out of the, from the HBCUs. Nothing happened like that. $30 billion was cut from the projection of 40 billion uh, that the president said he was going to do over a four-year period. So we said, this is, let's do it one-fourth of it. This is his first year, so let's do 10 and come back and get the other 30. Maybe 10 more in the second year, 10 more in the third year, and 10 more in the fourth year. We didn't cut anything out. We just did one year of HBCU rather than four years. Wait, are you, are you, are you suggesting that that the bill as written still provides the $40 billion over the 10 years? No, I'm not suggesting that. No. I'm suggesting it provides okay. 10 billion. And we'll look at right. next time and next time. That's the way you score. Get to, you know, we said on something, I spent a little time in law school. When the camera gets his nose under the tent, maybe he can work himself and get the hump later. Right, right. I want to. I only have a few minutes left here. I want to ask you about something. Last time I had you on the show, you were very optimistic that we were going to get something passed on the George Floyd Policing Act. Those negotiations fell apart. There was finger pointing on both sides, saying that you know that that they were not negotiating in good faith. How do you feel now that it looks like we're not going to get anything done on a federal policing act? I have not given up on it. You know. Um We'll be back in January. We get these economic things done, get people in a better frame of mind, uh, children are taken care of. You know the child tax credit will expire December the 31st. We get this bill passed and the bill back better. There's a, a full additional year 
uh, for child credit, uh, tax credits on it. Let's get that done. People get in a better frame of mind. And, and then I want to revisit the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. And this time, I hope people will join me in trying to get things done incrementally. We got the, uh, the Civil Rights Act in 64. We didn't get the Voting Rights Act until 65. We didn't get the Fair Housing Law until 68. We now got them all. The journey of a thousand miles begin with a single step. So if we can get some things done with uh, George Floyd, outlaw the chokehold, outlaw no knock uh, uh, interest, put a restraint in place so people who violate uh, their, the laws can't do something bad, get fired one place and go and get hired another place, that would be a start. And so what we lost this thing yes. for arguing over qualified immunity, and the moment I said, let's get started on this, everybody started giving me Hades. Well, now we got nothing. Representative Clyburn, I want to thank you for your time. I've kind of run out of time here. I, I hope that we get back uh, to talking about uh, a, poli a federal policing act, but it, it seems very hard to do if we're going to be down to an election year where hard votes are harder to come by. But anyway, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you very much for having me. Just remember, we passed it in the House.